This is CDC Podcast, Converse with Dr. Chepsi. We pride ourselves to bring you conversations around three broad areas, health, education, and culture. We bring you episodes every week, and I will be your host, Dr. Chepsi. Welcome to season one, episode four of the CDC podcast. Before we go on to today's conversation, even, we'd like to take this chance to appreciate everybody that has supported us so far. But if you're watching this episode and you've not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. And if you're listening on Spotify, please do the same and subscribe. So on episode four of season one of the CDC podcast, we have a special guest today. Our guest is a medical doctor and he has a very interesting and unique story. If you're in Kenya, it will be assumed that most of the time you have studied to be a doctor in Kenya. But for him, he has done it in a different way and he has come back to the country to practice. So he's going to take this time to share with us his stories and his experience and why he decided to come back home. My name is Dr. Chepsi and I'll be your host for this show. So welcome to this episode. Yes. Karibu uh, sana. Santi sana. Yes. It is a pleasure to yeah. be a guest in your show. Asante. And I can share my very, as you say, unique story <laughs> with <laughs> your guests. When we met for the first time at, uh, where was it? KBC. Yes, it was KBC Radio Taifa. Yes, KBC Radio Taifa. Um, we met and uh, we did catch up. And uh, I mean, um, I'm grateful that we kept in touch. Yeah, definitely. You know, these things happen for a reason. Yes. And when we met, it was actually the first time and we just clicked. We didn't have any notes when we did the, the radio show yeah. and it just worked, you know. It yeah, was, yeah, It was yeah. very, very nice. Mm. Yeah. Um, Dr. John Yani Gichana. Mm -hmm. I am a medical officer or a general practitioner mm -hmm. by practice. Mm -hmm. I currently just do what you may call locum, mm -hmm. which is like... Uh, well, contract basis type mm -hmm. of work. Mm -hmm. So like I go from hospital to hospital based on the available shifts yeah. and I do some work. Yeah. Yeah, the, the interesting part about the story for today, which would be the main story, is that I indeed did not study in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I did study in China. Yeah. Yes, right oh. before the pandemic is when I graduated. Mm -hmm. That's quite significant. We're going to talk about that. So when you say locum, it means you're not fixed to yes. one particular hospital. Uh, yes, mm. it's, it's a term that is used by a lot of uh, current medical practitioners. As mm -hmm. you know, there's an ongoing crisis of... Uh, employment in the healthcare system. So like for most of us, so since we cannot get formal or official contracts, mm -hmm. we work with the uh, shifts and also from hospital to hospital depending on the availability of the shift. Mm -hmm. So that's how we survive. If I can ask, is that by chance that it's because they are, you've not like officially gotten an, an offer for a kind of a permanent place to work or it is because you trained outside the country. I'd say it's something that affects everyone across the board. It's mm -hmm. not just specific to my training outside the country. Mm -hmm. It's actually that I haven't gotten a formal or a permanent job mm -hmm. offer that would allow me to work at one particular facility yeah. for a contract or for a period of time. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's oh. not unique to my case or unique <laughs> to the cases of people yes. that have studied abroad. Uh, yes. Wow. In which part of Kenya do you come from? Like home, 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 which side? Home county is uh, Kisi County and Nyamira County. Kisi. My dad's side is Nyamira County. Mm. My mom's side is Kisi County. Uh -huh. So I identify both as my home counties. Mm. But I was born and raised in Nairobi County. Oh. Yeah. Gishana, I, I would expect the name Gishana is, is Kikuyu. Uh, yes, there's a discrepancy when it comes to the pronunciation and mm -hmm. also the spelling of the name. Yeah, because it is true, you're very correct that there are Gishanas who are from the central region of yeah. Kenya. Mm -hmm. and then there's mine, the pronunciation is Gichana, so that is from the like uh, Nyamira and uh, that area. So, the way it is pronounced in, in, the, in, in Kikuyu is Gishana, yes, in, in, in Kisi is Gichana, yeah, like Gichana. 
Ichan. <laughs> I'm trying to add a little bit of the accent, yeah, the accent. so that you can get yeah, the it's, differentiation. It's important. Yeah, exactly. To, to get the exact gist, yeah. yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. I mean, mm. that's that's great. Wow. Yeah. How comes that you found yourself, did you find yourself or it was you, something that was planned that you had to leave Kenya and I, you went to study medicine in China? I have to say this is something that it's a very interesting journey to mm. be honest mm. because after I finished my high school, I did indeed actually apply to do medicine in uh, local universities. Which you I did? Wanted. Yes, I did actually. Mm. But at the same time, I, I decided that I needed to take a year off before I try applying again. Mm. The first time I applied, I don't know, there was a bit of an issue with mm. the grades was I did get a decent grade mm. and they said the cutoff point for the course that I applied, which by the way was dentistry, mm. not medicine. Yeah. That's another plot twist I'll explain later. Yeah. I applied for dentistry, mm -hmm. but the cutoff point for the aggregate cutoff point I missed out by one. Mm. So they told me just try and apply again next year. So mm. in that year I decided to just do languages. Uh, kind of like I'd call it a gap year. Mm. So when I was doing languages, I started doing German mm -hmm. and at the same time I was doing some computer courses. Mm -hmm. But I, as I was doing languages, I got fascinated with Chinese culture for some reason. Yeah. I just I just love the culture because when I was young I used to like the movies you know the oh, the movies yes <laughs> Jackie Chan was, yeah you know the Jet Li's the Jackie Chan's yeah. I love that things the Bruce Lee's mm -hmm. yeah I mm -hmm. love the movies mm -hmm. so one time I just uh, went online I was just trying to search I, I just did a random search I just typed in how can I go and do undergraduate for medicine in China mm -hmm. And it came up with the options. I mean, nowadays we have the AI, so it would be easier. But that days it was tough. You have to go through a lot of like uh, options all from the links. Google. So you find one, it's a fake link. Secondly, fake link mm. all the time. So luckily by the fourth link, I got lucky and I got in touch with uh, an agent who helps in this particular situation. They looked at my grades and they just advised me that I can apply for undergrad. Mm -hmm. But I'd have to do six months bridge, bridging yes. Chinese course, mm -hmm. but it would be a scholarship. So mm -hmm. I was like, it's a scholarship. I'll live, even if I have to study for one year Chinese, I'll study <laughs> one year Chinese. It's fine. Yeah. Let me apply. Yeah. And in that, in the course of that time, I applied and I waited. Mm -hmm. So that that time, I, it was around March of 2012. Mm -hmm. So I applied. I was expecting maybe I'll get an answer by September 2012. Mm -hmm. Uh, the disappointment just went, the year passed, mm -hmm. and then January. So I was still doing my German courses mm -hmm. just to keep myself busy. Yeah. So the year went and it passed. January came along. I mm -hmm. finished uh, up to level four of German. I was like, I'm done with German now. Kind mm -hmm. of done with languages. Let me focus on the IT part of things. Mm -hmm. So I was doing like web designing and such. And then around March, that's when the opening for applying for local universities came again. So I applied again. I was like, you know what? Let me just try multiple avenues. Mm -hmm. One will come out, right? Yeah, yeah. So I applied for the local universities. And then when I did, I was told the feedback will come around June. Mm -hmm. Little did I know that my feedback for the Chinese universities as well would come in June. <laughs> I didn't know. It was, it was coincidence. Yeah, yeah. So June came along. I got two offers. So I had a choice to make. Mm -hmm. I got an offer to go study med, uh, dentistry in Moi University, Eldoret. Mm. And I also got another offer to go and study medicine in Wenzhou University, which is in Southeast China, scholarship. Fully uh, sponsored? Yep. For the entire six for years? For the six years. All I had to pay it's for... six years, by the way? Yeah, it's six years. Oh, it's six years also? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's okay. five years study, one year internship. So, wow. Yeah, six years. Mm -hmm. So I had the decision to make mm -hmm. and my gut just told me, you know what, I mean, yeah, sure, it would be it would be more easier for me to just accept and go and do dentistry in my university. Yeah. It's home, it's easy, like I won't get all those sort of mm -hmm. like feelings of, oh my God, I'm like 8,000 kilometers away from my parents yeah. and family. How will I survive different country, different languages, everything? Yeah. I just took a deep breath and I just told my parents, I think... I should go to China. Mm -hmm. uh, they At first, they were skeptical. They were like, why? I was like, let me just go because I have a feeling it, there's a reason why I got the call <laughs> at the same time. You don't know what it is, but yeah, you just want to. I have a feeling I have to go there. Mm. And uh, that's what happened. I got, I got the confirmation letter from the university and I applied for 
my visa, which took really fast actually. Mm. It took less than a week to get the visa. Mm. They told me I have to report there in October. And this was June. That was June, so mm. I had a long time. Mm-hmm. But in between, I was just basically just telling people. Fully sponsored. Buy, fully sponsored. To go and study medicine <laughs> in China. To go and study medicine in China. Wow. The fascination. For, for, so you stayed there for six years? Yeah, I stayed there for six years. Studying five years and then uh, internship. One year internship, yes, correct. I actually had a choice of coming home for internship, but I decided to just do the full you finish, six years. You finish everything. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Yes. Wow. You know, I'm, I'm still vaccinated by, th- by that. But anyway, now let me ask you, when you, yes. l- you, you landed in China and now you're there, what was happening? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going through? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, uh, man, it, it, was, it, was, it, was it was my first time leaving the continent. Mm-hmm. I never left the continent in my entire life. Mm. The farthest I'd gone to is to Tanzania, Tanzania right, just yeah. south of the border, mm. or by car, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I've only used a plane to go from here to Mombasa or here to Kisumu. That's yeah. it. Yeah. First of all, it was kind of like a very exhilarating experience because mm-hmm. like, it's a new experience, you know, like, oh my God, Traveling I want to try something new. Traveling for 30 hours. Oh, the flight was... God, it was 16 hours. 16 hours. Yeah, yeah. so it was uh, around six hours from here to, because uh, we used a uh, connecting route. So it was here to Addis Ababa, that's around six hours, 30 minutes, then mm-hmm. a layover of around... Addis Ababa, yes. Ethiopia? Yes. Six hours? Yeah. Why? I was surprised as well, because I thought it was around maybe three hours or four hours. It's only even le- about yeah, two hours. Exactly. I was surprised it took long. I was I was wondering, was the plane old or were they just You guys were cautious? hijacked. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> no, you guys but, were hijacked. But you I, didn't believe, know. I believe the issue was like the taxing, like basically just before landing, maybe there was a huge volume at the time. Mm. Back in 2013, they were still expanding the terminal, so there was a lot of taxing wow, issues. Wow, six hours. At this about and then and then the massive eight hours from here to Guanjo directly yeah from Addis Ababa to Guanjo eight hours mm. yeah that was long wow and then a final two hours from Guanjo to where I was stationed Stay, to study yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. so was it like kind of a remote place or it's still a city it's a city mm-hmm. it's actually <laughs> My shock was like, okay, because I'd never heard of the city in my entire life. I mm, never heard mm, of it. Mm. So I was expecting, ah, you know what, maybe the university is quite a nice building. But after that, it was just rural farmlands and stuff like that. Wow. Mm-hmm. I was shocked. Mm-hmm. Was super developed. They have so much. So mm-hmm. when I got there, the biggest culture shock that I faced mm-hmm. was like immediately you step out of the plane mm-hmm. a few meters outside Everybody is smoking and they're offering you cigarettes. It was crazy. Wow. <laughs> Those people have no filters. It's like it's their way of communication, you mm-hmm. know. So they're just offering you cigarettes. So I was like, no, 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 please no. Like you just landed and everybody's smoking and so yeah. it's communal. Oh, you, okay, it's here. communal smoking, yes. And another thing is they were equally fascinated because of like, again, mm-hmm. the city itself can be considered rural in the general complex of China. Of China, it's that one is a rural place. It's kind of rural, but like it, it was it was well developed. But the people had that kind of mentality of like working. Like when we see like people in rural area areas mm-hmm. see like white people, they get like mzungu mzungu. So mm-hmm. for us, it was it was reverse. Now they see me, they're like. A black person. Okay, black person. Is he American or is he... What's yeah, wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty interesting when mm-hmm. I got there. Mm-hmm. The kids were coming and wanted to touch your skin. Yep, they were trying to rub my skin to see whether I had some dirt and the dirt <laughs> is not coming off. <laughs> or they were trying to touch my hair and they were wondering why my hair feels like that. Because yeah. they have the straight hair, like the long straight hair. Yeah, yeah. And now it's the curly. Curl, yeah. So they were fascinated. And at the time, I had a bit of an afro. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. Quite mm. interesting. So you learned, you get introduced to, you go to report to the university. Yes. There you. was actually someone from the university who picked us up and took us to the university. Mm. Wow. Were you the only black student? No, no, no. We were quite a number. The school had around 1,100 international students enrolled out of a total of 15,000 students enrolled. That's in medical only or all, all courses? That's medical. 
Yes, that's 15,000 medi- 15, medical, medical students, students in total, yes. In one university. In one university. That's how massive it is. Where are all these going to practice? <laughs> <laughs> they, they have in Kenya, ma- we have 100 students per class and we're saying that's a lot exactly. for the country. I know. Like even in a year, you get like around 950 graduates in Kenya alone. Yeah, total. There, there you can get up to up to 200,000 people graduating. 200,000 students graduating with, to Just become for doctors. Med school. Yes. Just for to med become school. doctors. To become and doctors. all of them are going to be absorbed. They'll be absorbed all over the country. In all over the provinces. There's no, nothing like, oh, doctors, they mm-hmm. don't have jobs mm-hmm. and They're stuff. They're absorbed. They're all absorbed. And what are we doing in Kenya? I don't know. We can, we have We're only capacity. producing less than a thousand per year, total, all medical schools. And we're already saying there is too much. There's an influx. That's what's happening here. And that's what they're saying. But I feel that it's very possible to absorb everyone. Because if <laughs> they can absorb 200,000 people, how about us with less than a thousand people? Surely that is possible. And well, somebody can argue that China has a big population. One they one billion? Do. It was one point four billion. Billion. Yes. Yeah, I but counting. that of course is commensurate to the doctors they are producing. But yeah. also the number of our own doctors we are producing is it's commensurate to, to our population. population. Which is not small, by the way. It's around it's it's reaching sixty million yeah. very soon. So I mean a thousand to sixty million, that's still a very minute fraction. Anyway, I I'm just feeling angry <laughs> because of that. <laughs> but know. but let's let, let's 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 move on. So you get settled. So at this time, you you had you learned some Chinese, or you are going to start afresh? Day? I had zero idea of any spoken Chinese word. I wow. can say that I did try and learn a few phrases, yeah. like saying hello mm. and saying my name is mm-hmm. those sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. But the rest of the stuff, I had to use gestures. I had to point there, or point to my paper, or say like you know. Mm. I am student or something. Just try to use like the most rudimentary English so that they can understand what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. some of them, the campus students do speak English, but they are shy about their English. Mm. So they prefer you talk to them in Chinese. In Chinese, yeah. But the rest of the population... Yeah. Chinese. Yeah, Chinese. You have to. Yeah, definitely. All right, all right. So how do you say hello in Chinese? Ni hao. Ni hao. Oh, yes. the one we had was, how do you reply? Ni hao. Ni hao, ni hao. Yeah. Okay. And then if you want to ask how are you, you just mm. add ma at the end. So it's ni hao ma. Ni hao ma. And then you say? Uh, if you want to say I'm good, wo hen hao. Wo hen hao. Nina. Nina means and you. Oh. So wo hen hao <laughs> means I'm good. Good. Hey, man, you, you. <laughs> and then you have to put the accent or they don't have the accent. Oh, yes, definitely. That's another thing. Mm. They have five tonations. So that means there's five there's one word can be pronounced five ways that has five different meanings. So be careful how you say it. There's wow. a flat accent, there's a dipping accent, there's a rising accent, there's a falling accent, and then there's a neutral accent. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <That's It's>, not... <laughs> I, I stayed there for six years. There are some words people still don't understand what I'm saying. Because, because of the accent. The tones. The, the tones. tones, okay. Exactly. So you, for six months when you, you landed, you're mm. doing purely studying Chinese, no yeah. medical things. No medical things. Because the med school is taught in Chinese also. The med school is taught half and half. You get the Chinese taught and then English taught. Mm. Because there are some technical courses that they still didn't have people that could actually like relay mm-hmm. the Translate course the courses. Into, yeah, it mm. would take time. So mm. they have to get, I don't know, someone to translate what they are saying to us and then maybe the translation will be lost. So you have to have that idea of Chinese. Mm-hmm. And also in the hospital, it's 100% Chinese. There's yeah. no English whatsoever. Mm. So they're just prepping us as well. So you finish the, the language, language course, course yeah, in six medicine. months, and then now you start med school. Yes. First year. Yes. Anatomy, physiology. Yep. The, the entire curriculum of med school, how you, how you know So it anatomy you are know taught in, in, in Chinese. <laughs> uh, what is, how is the heart called in Chinese? Shin. muscles muscles ah yeah yeah muscles hey man i have forgotten because it's been a while since yeah you lived yeah yeah. but like uh, head to core bow stomach bow yeah stomach chest chest xiong xiong yes 
You have to say with that accent, Xiong. <laughs> Xiong. Yeah. Okay. Like, goes like this Xiong, then Xiong, mm-hmm. then Xiong, then Xiong, then Xiong. Mm-hmm. Different S- words. All right. So at what stage, at what stage is it third year, fourth year that you go to the wards now? You start doing the clinicals. Mm, start doing the clinicals in fourth year. Fourth year. Yeah. So but, so for you go to the wards and you now you have to wards, get active with the real patients. The real patients get some uh, history taken, mm. uh, do some physical. Uh, yeah. How are the patients receptive? I mean, being a black person in China, were they receptive? I'll be fairly honest, it's 50-50. Uh-huh. There are some patients that were very fascinated mm-hmm. because they were interested to getting uh, treatment from a foreign doctor because mm-hmm. sometimes some of the Chinese people got frustrated mm-hmm. that their local the local doctors are not very good, so they're interested in some foreign doctors. <laughs> so you, you'd you get those ones that are eager for you to do tests on them. Yeah. Then you get the ones that completely refuse. They, they're they like, no, 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 mm-hmm. no, no, no. Mm-hmm. Don't touch me. No, don't do anything. No, no. Mm. I just want him. And he's pointing to a uh, Chinese uh, uh, yeah. classmate or yeah. someone. Yeah. Sure. I mean, it, it's not something uncommon. I mean, it's so common. Even yes. in Kenya itself, you know, you'll go to attend to patients and there is a patient who will refuse to be attended by a by junior, junior doctor, doctor and they will prefer a senior doctor exactly. or uh, even muzungu yeah yeah so i mean even something as simple as like the patients who would prefer to be seen by doctors of the same gender you see so oh, yes. like the same thing yeah so it's yeah. It's, it's 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 understandable yeah it yeah. wasn't it, it wasn't it didn't really make me feel any but i understood it's like the mm. patient has a and choice. something you will definitely yeah, anticipate. Something you already anticipated. Definitely. And of course, it did not, it was not that much that it hindered no, your learning. It didn't hinder my learning. Because even if they didn't want me to touch them or they didn't want any of my fellow Africans to touch them, there's, there's like a Chinese, uh, another Chinese colleague of us would mm. go and do the test and we'll see how they do, they do it and we can learn through that. Yeah. And maybe we get another patient who's receptive. willing and then you can practice. Okay, ah. practice. And that's just how it, it goes. Exactly. So, so it's, it's, it's encouraging because that, that says that if you don't, somebody is here and is watching this and they don't get the opportunity to study medicine in Kenya, there are, there are alternatives, alternatives outside there. And mm-hmm. yeah. I wanted to add, usually when that idea comes about, like, you know, oh, uh, studying outside is quite expensive. Mm. The, you you could get lucky and get a scholarship like I did. And mm-hmm. you could go to, to those other countries. And if the scholarship doesn't happen, they also accept, like, uh, how do they call it? Regular, uh, not regular, parallel. parallel. Program. Like yeah. you pay for yourself. You pay for yourself, like self-sponsored. Mm-hmm. And the good thing about that is, like, even if you pay yourself sponsored, mm-hmm. you go there. Based on your performance, yeah. you can actually get some stipend from the government to kind of subsidize your school fees. They do that? Yes, they do. Every year. There are some people who... And you're a foreigner? Yes. You get around... I remember the first prize for good performance because it was all around. It was not just academic. It was mm-hmm. academic, uh, athletic, as well as just social social credit. Mm. So if you do well, they can give you up to it's ten thousand yuan. Mm-hmm. With the current exchange rate, it's around two hundred thousand Kenyan shillings. Pa- for that year, they oh, give you the two hundred thousand. Like it's, it's a performance like, yeah, per year. Yeah, they tell you like you've won the Chinese scholarship, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Chinese government scholarship. Mm. Here you go. First price is two hundred thousand. If you've paid the fees, fine. You can and how much 20, is the 000. fee per year if you if you if you can share mm. where you are? Okay, the fee was around five hundred thousand Kenya shillings at mm-hmm. the time per year. Five hundred. It's it's just the same like in it's Kenya. It's basically the same. And for the first three years, that one includes also like accommodation. You get like the five hundred k includes accommodation. Yep. So then food is now where you food used. and uh, transport other, other and other things. things. The monthly stipend now, po. You, you look it, uh, yes. oh, wow. But if you get a scholarship, it will be school there fees, housing, and everything. Yeah. Wow. That's 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 quite encouraging. So what were Pite? What were Pite Mtiani? What were Pite Mtiani? Na musiogope sana kujaribu inje mukiona hapa kata. Anything yeah. is possible. Ah, that's 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 really encouraging. Yes. Yeah, very, very encouraging. 
now so you fourth year is over you go to fifth year again mm-hmm. now that's like senior clerkship fifth year is senior clerkship mm-hmm. now you do what like it's elective year so you have to go to you have to go to the main city campus that's where they have the pediatric hospital as well as the specialist hospitals mm. yeah so you'd be based there mm-hmm. you'd be doing a lot of like uh uh elective work mm. less class more elective so you'd mm-hmm. be going mostly to the wards you'd be checking patient case by case patient mm-hmm. by case mm-hmm. just getting that feel of how to how it is to work in the hospital was it intense at the first part it was very intense mm-hmm. i mean like that that transition from classroom to mm-hmm. going to hospital yeah. was very intense mm-hmm. classroom was basically like how you'd experience classroom anywhere yeah, else yeah was the same it had the same dynamics and everything mm-hmm. but when it came to going to the hospital you are grouped into a smaller group Groups, so yes. the spotlight can be <laughs> on you how how is the med school culture there the, the relationship between the students ch- and the senior the consultants um they were nice they were open to your questions anytime mm-hmm. if you wanted to help them with the some of them actually if you want to help them with their research you can go and see how they do their research mm-hmm. and if you have any questions they can reach out mm-hmm. even i remember when i was in f- second year mm-hmm. uh, there was one of my lecturers uh, my senior lecturers they were doing like uh, research on kidney neogenesis or something something yeah something related to that so she noticed I had an interest in anatomy so she invited me to the labs and we did some experiments with uh, the lab rats and such mm. and after that uh, we went for dinner she tried to like show me chinese culture so we went for a nice ch- traditional chinese dinner introduced me to the family it was very nice they were very w- welcoming and opening to be honest i still wow. have a contact up to today that's that's encouraging yeah. and then <laughs> now now that you've mentioned that in yes. terms of resources mm. i mean of course maybe you didn't study here in, but i'm sure right now we've walked no, around yeah, to yeah, our I've universities yeah, our I've medical seen. schools the, it's a medical school which there it's considered to be in the village but you're talking mm. about rat real rat experiments yes. in the in the lab yeah. like how how different are we from our in terms of our medical schools being equipped with resources na huko i'd say we are catching up but <laughs> they are quite ahead when it comes to their resources yeah. i mean like i remember I was talking to one of my colleagues who was studying in UON mm. and you know in anatomy like uh, se- systemic anatomy when you have to go for to the morgue mm-hmm. right mm-hmm you'd find like uh, you have like maybe three or four cadavers mm. for the entire class mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. that's true yeah for us we'd have around 10 cadavers and we only a 100 students so mm. 10 10 students get a cadaver mm-hmm. so we were working in sections mm. on the cadaver mm. and then when it came to like experiments we'd even work in smaller groups like even much more smaller groups mm-hmm. like maybe a group of three or group of four which you have more time with the equipment yeah. and you know and stuff yes so learning is more personalized yeah that's that's that that's great so you you've done with your fifth year and then you go to internship yes mm. how was the internship experience there <laughs> Yeah, internship was something that I was never prepared for from the first few months. <laughs> it hit me off, it caught me off guard because yeah. it was intense. It mm-hmm. was a 52 week internship yes. rather than 26 yeah, departments. Because I'm sure the okay, I also did internship when I came back, like when the you post graduate internship, like after you've graduated you mm-hmm. do internship, right? So that is usually reserved for for instance after you finished your undergrad mm-hmm. in Kenya you mm-hmm. do that internship before you're given the nice. certification oh you are saying the one for in Kenya yes i did yes, that yes, as well yes yes i think yeah it's it's the requirement by the board in Kenya okay. to for if you've mm. trained for outside the country to still do you the to still do the internship yes. even if you did the internship here that's that's another reason why i decided to do the internship there mm-hmm. rather than coming home to do internship yes. because it would be double work mm-hmm. So yes it was a 52 week program 26 departments and the first department I was thrown into emergency medicine <laughs> it was chaos i went it was supremely chaotic because now you'd find patients are coming in 
Now you have to think on your feet. You're translating what they're saying, but you're translating the idea of what the patient has. You're just doing that, translating, translating, translating. So translating, it, it, there's the issue of language. You translate the language yeah. and then also the medical issue. But by the time but you're finishing the first department... After I finished the first rotation, second. I started getting a groove. Mm -hmm. Like I started getting a bit more confident, a bit more like direct. I used to get some things done quicker. Mm -hmm. Even some departments, I was given like a, like a few days off because I managed to get the quota that I needed to. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. So which one was your your best experience in the internship? Which mm. department? Pediatrics. I loved pediatrics. <laughs> Honestly, pediatrics was so... Because I did... It was divided into three. Mm -hmm. It was divided into acute pediatrics, mm -hmm. uh, general and surgical pediatrics, and neonatology. Mm -hmm. So we did general surgical pediatrics for four, for four weeks. Mm. It was... It was very interesting. That was your best experience. I loved that one so much. Neonatology was a bit stressful, but mm. it was very rewarding. Yeah, of course, dealing with the tiny ones. The tiny it's, babies. Yeah. The less than 28 days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. So let me ask, the up to fifth year, you were under scholarship. Mm. Now you're on internship. Yes. That's the sixth year. Yeah. I assume that the scholarship is over. The scholarship is over. So you how are you surviving now with the internship? Mm. Are you paid? No, you don't pay for the internship. Are you paid? Like, are you under a salary? No, I'm not under a salary. I had to find another way to survive. So mm -hmm. I used to get some stipend from home, mm -hmm. but considering that the stipend that was coming from home was considerable to the scholarship, mm. the scholarship ended, mm -hmm. I had to figure out something. So I started uh, doing on my part time teaching English to Chinese students. <laughs> 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 the Kenyan Very spirit. Yeah. The Kenyan spirit. Go hustle. Ah, you have to. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was fascinating. The, the students loved me very much uh -huh. because of the fact that I was actually very, I was very animated. Uh -huh. As you can see, there's an increment towards pediatrics. Anyway, I was very yeah. animated with the children when I taught them. And uh, we had, like, we got along and the teaching was fine. But it was difficult to kind of balance between internship and also preparing for the graduation exam and preparing documents to teach the English mm -hmm. class. So, mm -hmm. But I managed to find but a balance. But you managed. Yes. And you were making enough money to keep you going. Yeah. I made I made good money. Wow. I really wow. did. That's, that's, that's a nice, nice experience. But now, is it that you are a foreigner so that you're not being, being paid in internship and the Chinese... Interns are paid. No. So the internship there is unpaid. Internship is unpaid. Internship is internship. And then there's residency. Residency is where you get paid. Now, after you've graduated, that's when they'll mm. give you like a stipend. Mm. You'll be like, yeah, have this as your... Oh, you, there that you do internship, then now you graduate. Yes, you do internship, then you graduate, then you start residency. That's okay. when you start... There's no paid. general practitioner there? Mm -mm. They don't have general practitioners. Oh, wow. Great. Now, uh, let me ask this question. Why did you decide to come back to Kenya and not remain there? Because I'm looking at it, you had quite a high chance of remaining there, getting absorbed into the residency again. Uh, yes, I, I figured that I'd like to come back to Kenya, first of all, because of I've always wanted to work as a doctor in Kenya, in Kenya. to be honest. Mm. And as much as it would have been, it looks easy to get absorbed into Chinese uh, medical system. Mm -hmm. It's quite challenging. I had one of my friends decide to stay there. Up to now, mm -hmm. they are not yet absorbed into the system. Mm -hmm. They've, they graduated. They mm -hmm. did a bit of residency. In fact, I think they did something to do with surgery. Mm -hmm. Still no absorption yet. They, in fact, actually finished their... They have specialized. Yeah. They are specialized in general surgery. Mm -hmm. In fact, even after they finished specializing, they just uh, lifted their hands and said, ah, I'm going back home. They went back there. Mm. Mm. But, but don't you think it is good to come back when you have specialized? I, I think it will have been easier if somebody will come back when you are already specialized or there is something behind it. For me, I think it was more of a personal decision mm. to come back uh, when I've just gotten my undergrad so that I get a bit of experience before I specialize. Mm. 
Because if I decided to just directly specialize and I come here, mm. and considering the curriculum is slightly different as compared to here, mm. I might have some gaps in knowledge, mm. especially with tropical diseases and such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You come back. Yes. What first are you experiencing? You come back in Kenya. You need to get your papers. How did that go? The transition. Uh, I think the tra- okay the transition. It felt it was a bit. It was very cumbersome to be honest, but it was quite. It was quite streamlined. Mm-hmm. Once you get everything into order, mm-hmm. you can do it very fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. like for example, after you graduate, you get your degree and your graduation certificate as well as your transcript and all those other things from their university from there, yeah, yeah after yeah. immediately mm. so you have to go through the process of getting them notarized by the notary general in the province mm. to get them notarized mm, that part that side you're done mm. now you bring it back to Kenya mm-hmm. you have to get a lawyer to confirm that the notary is valid is valid then you take them to the commissions of university or higher education to mm. verify that the university you went to is recognized mm. by the Kenyan system. True. Once you get that done, and after that, I think you are you're okay. Then now to get the license, how now do you that? Now to get the license. To practice in Kenya. Yes, now after you've done that, you have to go to the council, the KMPDC, mm. and apply for like uh, an, an exam, the qualification exam. Mm. But the prerequisite, I don't know whether that has changed. The mm. prerequisite is that you have to do a, a small period of time of pre-internship in one of the local hospitals to mm. familiarize yourself with that. Mm. Usually, there was two centers in Nairobi. There was Mbagadi Hospital and there was Kenyatta Hospital. So you have to go there, do a rotation? Do rotation in the four major rotations. That's surgery, pediatrics, internal medicine, and... Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's how long did that take you? It only took me four months, a month each in every. Oh, a month each. Yeah. Then you go and sit for the exams. Yes. You pass exam, then you get the license. Yeah. So a full general practice license. Yeah. Oh, great! And uh, that was smooth. There was no issue with it. Mm, remember, okay. Usually, it's supposed to be smooth because <laughs> I'm getting there's there's also people who are coming from abroad. They're facing problems yes. today. But usually it's supposed to be smooth. Mm-hmm. For me, it was a bit of a unique situation because mm-hmm. I came right before COVID started. Mm-hmm. COVID just started uh, like two months after I left China and it only got to Kenya maybe six months, around December. So, yeah. so you just left China. I can imagine what would have happened if, I would have been, I would have, I if you know. were there. Wow, you you could possibly be locked. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have been allowed to leave. The, I barely left on time. Yeah, yeah. that so that close. would have turned to something a different experience. Uh, you, you shared about, and you mentioned part of it when we started the part of smoking. Oh yes, yeah. that one actually. Uh, you say the culture there in China, people smoke, mm. and you mentioned that it got you 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 into the same. Mm, mm. I have to say, mm. like the first year and a half up to second year, I was fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would uh, reject the advances, but because I needed to learn the language, I got into a lot of Chinese friends, and most of the Chinese friends, well, the male Chinese friends, they like to smoke. They cigarettes. smoke here. Yeah. It's like a social lubricant. <laughs> it's like how people here. The social lubricant of choice, I guess, is alcohol. Yeah. So there it's both. It's cigarettes and, and alcohol. alcohol yeah. So for me, I just, like, because of succumbing to their pressure, I just decided to kind of, like, yeah, I'll just try one cigarette. It's fine. Yeah, little did I know. So they were pestering you over and over. They were pestering me. It was crazy. <laughs> like, you'd reject them as many times as you can, but at some point in time, you just said, ah, they just keep pestering me. I'll just have to. Just have to say yes. Mm. But they were respectful. It wasn't like serious, like uh, coercing, like mm-hmm. if you don't take this, I don't know. No, no. Mm-hmm. It was more like, come on, come on, don't, don't, don't stand Nothing, out. Nothing, no big deal. No, no big deal. No big like, deal. Don't, don't, don't stand out. We're all here smoking. I don't want to sit in this. Not smoking. <laughs> don't stand out. Uh, the one, odd one much. out. Yeah. Uh, then was, you started the first puff. <laughs> yeah, it was the most dangerous thing you'd ever do in your life. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, it was a it was a long journey. It was like a four-year journey. And in year Kenya, journey. you had never smoked. Never. 
Never tried drugs. No, in Kenya I was a simple guy. I used to just like my coffee and I used to like my meals. Never smoked, never tried anything whatsoever. Wow. So you take it and you smoke the first time and that's it, you're in. Yeah. The first puff you get in, you'd want it. You'd like be it's like you know, how can I explain? It's like you're chasing something that you cannot attain. Mm-hmm. So you just keep on getting the cigarette. It's more mm-hmm. It starts as a psychological dependence, then it becomes a physiological dependence. Dependence. Yes. Your body now you can't function without it. Yeah. Initially, it's more psychological. It's like, I need it, I need it. But your body is fine without it. Mm-hmm. Then when it sets in properly, it's now when you notice that if you don't take it, you start getting some weird symptoms. Maybe you get a headache, maybe you get some shivering a mm-hmm. bit, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, never got to the shivering part. It got through some mild headache. Mm-hmm. That's that's when I decided I have to kind of like slow down. Mm-hmm. This it's going to be serious if mm-hmm. I keep going. And mm-hmm. I'm looking at the effects of the thing that I'm using when I'm studying. Like, yeah, this is this is something I can <laughs> have to stop at some point in time. Yeah. At that point, are you f- experiencing any changes in how you're breathing, your lungs? Mm, you, you feel the most, the most, uh, the most shocking change was I think was in third year because I started in second year. So mm-hmm. third year during the summer vacation, it was by semester, but they forgot to explain that. Mm. So during the summer vacation, I I got like a serious chest infection mm. when I went to the hospital. Mm-hmm. They found that I had like a serious uh, bronchitis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I had lost uh, around 10 kgs mm-hmm, from mm-hmm. the previous year. So mm-hmm. I was really I was really skinny. You could see my bones. I was like, yo, I've, I've, I've never been this skinny <laughs> in my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. At that point in time, I was told by, I think the doctor just, I, he just clearly saw like it wasn't any sort of bacterial infection. It wasn't any infection. It was more of like too much inflammation. Mm. He said like, if you keep going like this, you're going to kind of like destroy your lungs mm. completely. Mm. So that point in time, I kind of took some, I, I started taking the measures to reduce the mm. intake. Mm-hmm. It was a long journey, but. And when you now into the smoking, now are you into alcohol as well? It kind of goes hand in hand. That's the problem. Once you get into this, the Once other one comes. Once you get into this, it kind of comes with that. And that time, again, I'm thinking about like uh, how most campuses operate. When you have those two, they just go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Thank goodness it was only those two and nothing else. Because <laughs> the other stuff is just not something that you wish to try to or try, do yeah. anything. There's yeah. nothing you're missing out by not trying. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I'll always say. Wow. Yes. So how was the journey? Because I think the people might be interested in the journey of getting out of it. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's it's something that I can say it was very eye-opening and it, it taught me a lot about the mental state of the human mind mm. because literally just deciding to stop immediately, that will not work. Mm, I'll true. tell you that for free. Mm. You can stop maybe first, first day, second day, third day, fourth day. You're proud of yourself. Fifth day, then sixth day, you relapse and you just become even twice Worse. as much. You now find that maybe you are taking maybe six cigarettes a day. You've re- you've gone for four days no cigarettes. The sixth day, now you're taking twelve a day near a park because you get that like serious urge. But mm. the the key here is consistency and also willpower. Like mm. literally trying to will yourself to kind of like stay away one from situations that actually trigger you to get into into that smoking situation Mm -hmm. one Mm -hmm. and two trying to stay away from literally the thing like if you know like i can buy it from the shop down there Mm. then don't go to the shop down there yeah yeah. try and use a different shop to go somewhere else or go to a different shop that doesn't sell it you have to exercise some sense of paranoia. You have to exercise some serious sense of paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite a tough, yeah. So you had to even stop hanging out with the friends you had? Yeah, I kind of had to tell them the truth. I, I just told them, like, you know, me, before we met, I never used to smoke. Mm. I really, really detest the habit because it made me really sick that time. And I don't want to be this sick again. Mm. 
So don't take offense to it, but I just don't think we should hang out anymore mm. because like if I keep hanging out with you guys, it will be tough for me to stop smoking. Mm. Maybe when I kick the habit completely, then we can hang out. Mm-hmm. The good thing is that they totally understood. They didn't take it as if I was being like a spoil spot or anything. Mm-hmm. They understood that mm-hmm. I came out with clear facts and they supported me. So whenever they'd see me and they were smoking, they'd kind of stop smoking. So oh, that wow. they kind of like respect that my decision to stop was mm-hmm. my decision to stop. Mm-hmm. And I don't want them to influence me to get back into the situation. That's that's quite quite uh, supportive of them. Yes. But so how long did it take you? Okay, for how many years did you smoke? Like mm-hmm. the active smoking before starting to get out of I it? I think... Uh, Good thing I didn't smoke for too long. Mm. From second year all the way to around uh, before, in, uh, actually, to halfway through internship. So that's around four and a half years. Four and a half years. Mm. Smoking seriously. Yes. How many How many sticks per day? Initially, it was something like four. At the peak, it was a box a day. Twelve. Or how many 20. in a box? A box has 20. I've yes. never seen <laughs> it. has 20. 20. There was, there was a time it was, wow, it was really serious. It was 20. Wow. Yeah, but slowly I just cut it out. So yeah. about four years of smoking and then now when you start to get out of it, how long did it take? When I started to get out of it, it took me, because after I graduated, the entire year after I graduated, I, I went clean. I didn't relapse even once. Mm. However, the 18th month, I did relapse, but I only took like two cigarettes, but that's it. After that, you've been good. I've been good. No urges, nothing. I even gained back the weight that I had lost. I actually gained some fat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit we would like to see the, the, the photo before. <laughs> I yeah. should find the photo <clears throat> and I can share it to you. But to be honest, there's three very important things when it comes to quitting mm-hmm. such habits. Yeah. It's not just cigarettes, even alcohol, yeah. such habits. Mm-hmm. Number one is consistency. Number two is just having the support around you. And mm-hmm. number three is just having the right mentality and willpower to quit. Mm-hmm. If you're consistent in your objective to be completely clean of this situation, mm-hmm. trust me, no matter how long it takes, you'll be out of it. Don't take shortcuts. Don't be like, okay, I want to stop now. Stop completely. And then, it can't mm, happen. No, mm. no. Mm. Take your consistent steps. Say like, okay, I'm used to taking three today, two mm. in a week, one. Mm. Then finally, maybe it a skip a day. Mm. Then maybe a skip a week. Then you find that within a month, you're like, wow, no edges at all. Mm. Then it just becomes normal. True. Yeah. That's 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 really, really good. And it's... it's it, and you're giving it from the experiential point of view. It's not like it's not somebody anecdotal. teaching. It's not like just I'm cheating. writing a note and telling <laughs> you, don't do this. No, no, no. I'm telling you how it actually it, worked. Yeah. Yeah. I just did it consistently. Mm. Like I said, I have to go from this number slowly all the way till I don't need anything mm. like that anymore. Mm-hmm. And it worked. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm so encouraged by that. And I maybe there's somebody who will be watching, listening to this podcast and they can be able to be encouraged if they, there is some kind of addiction to drugs, yeah. alcohol, or smoking, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. They can... They can get out of it. It's yeah. not impossible. Yeah. <laughs> it is possible. Yes. That's very encouraging. <coughs> so as we are coming to the close, what next? Are you going back to China? Are you <laughs> remaining in Kenya? What next? Uh, currently, uh, I'm still doing the law coming, but I have I have ambitions of actually I did have ambitions of going back to China. Mm. I had an idea of doing a postgraduate course in my university. It specializes on uh, on ophthalmology. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they do have one of the oldest ophthalmology schools yeah. over there. And again, if I'm just putting my ear to the ground. There's there's scholarship offers in December. Mm. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I'll try again <laughs> and see whether I can get yeah yeah I yeah. can get the scholarship and mm-hmm. be good. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it, it's good considering you know in Kenya right now postgraduate training is quite expensive. Yeah, I saw the yeah. fees. And 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 no nobody is paying you. You're I'm, working I'm, close to eighty hours a week, and yeah, nobody is paying you. And in exactly. fact, you have to pay hundreds of thousands of school fees. So I think, uh, of course, 
making sense of the postgraduate that you're going to do outside there if it is going to work if you want mm. to come back in Kenya mm. i think it's definitely worth it yeah because yeah, man right now mm. we are trying in Kenya but we are looking <laughs> are trying, <laughs> outside we, we, we also we are trying to figure out other yeah. options as well Yes, but man, thanks so much. Um, we're coming to the close. If you have something else you want to share with us, a word and encouragement, you charge us. <laughs> First of all, if you have a dream or a goal that you want to achieve, it doesn't have to be medicine. It mm. has to be anything that you have a passion for. Mm. Try and think outside the box. Mm -hmm. Try and be unique. Try mm -hmm. and just take a chance. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you never know. All you need is one successful attempt. You mm -hmm. can have 200 failures, but one successful attempt is what would get you out of that situation that you are in right now. True. Second thing I want to talk about is for those that have various forms of addictions. Mm -hmm. As you've heard clearly from my example, I battled with that seriously. Mm -hmm. And I am happy to say this is year three, smoke-free. Mm -hmm. So it is very possible to leave those types of addictions. It doesn't have to be alcohol, any form of addiction. You can leave it behind with just a few adjustments and remember the three things that I said. Mm. You can do it. You're not alone. We are here. We support you. You'll mm. be fine. And the final thing it has to do with now, like uh, my current situation, as you know, the plight of like uh, healthcare in Kenya is kind of going through a lot of changes. There's the things with the, the UHC and all these other stuffs. I'd like to urge like the public to kind of take a nonpartisan route towards looking at these things mm -hmm. and kind of understand what is at stake. Be your own stakeholder. Get into into these conversations. There's in fact a national dialogue for healthcare happening, I think, in 18th of October in Kericho. Mm. I'm planning to be there because I am a stakeholder of healthcare <laughs> as well. Yeah. I need to kind of like see what I can do to help out. Because mm. like, as you've heard from Dr. Tari, we are trying our best here, but for some of us, majority of us, Jichomoje in Angalia, Inje, kwa sababu ya shida tunapitia, we're not trying to be greedy or anything. We're just being human because you're also considering your health care. Mm. Remember, for us to have a prosperous nation, we have to have a healthy a nation. A healthy nation, true. Yeah. Nice, nice. So I'm, I'm, I'm still hungry, Annie. You see, you say China, China is a big country, of it course. It is huge. But 200,000 doctors, is... doctors only, not nurses, doctors. only doctors, 200,000 yep. graduating every year. Mm. And each of them at least is being absorbed into the system somewhere. Yeah. They have a very like structured um, uh, healthcare system. They have like how we have, it's how they have. Mm -hmm. Only difference is every level has a doctor. Like from the grassroots level, like level ones mm. to level twos to level threes, level fours, level doctors. five, level six. They have doctors in every level. For us, it's kind of like scattered. You might find a doctor maybe at level three at the best. And they're spread all over. And there's also like community-based health cares. Like you find like community clinics. These are not even structured in the level structures. Mm. Like community clinics. And it has a doctor. Yeah, it has a doctor who's there. Man, I'm so angry. Like in Kenya, I mean, we graduate less than a thousand doctors per year. But uh, we can't get jobs, man. It is... It is, uh, and then <laughs> it is something that uh, if we had more time, we could touch we'll, on. But we'll like, talk about wow. it. But maybe, maybe in another... Food for thought. Uh, yeah, talk. food for thought for now. In another episode, we can talk extensively about the troubles of the health workforce, especially the young young graduates. Because yeah. the and older then, guys already settled already in their settled jobs. Yeah, their so. jobs. But yeah, and also, I mean, <clears throat> to remind the young guys who are just graduating from high school mm. that there are alternatives to study outside the country Definitely. and uh, many have scholarships yeah they just have to to, just to have keep to, checking yeah keep checking mm. like nowadays we have this like ai's on uh, like search engines mm -hmm. like chat gpt and mm -hmm. something let's go type there uh, undergraduate scholarship and they'll try and give you like a general or vague idea of mm -hmm. how you can go about it mm -hmm. and try your luck you mm. never know 
Great. <laughs> I trust that you guys have learned a, uh, quite a number of things about uh, studying medicine outside the country, in this case, to study medicine in China from somebody who has done it successfully and has come back to Kenya and has successfully registered to practice in Kenya as a medical doctor. And you can do that if you want to do that. And, you know, he's shared this story also about struggling with the addiction to smoking and how he has come out of it. And that is something that I find it very, very beneficial and very educative for the many of us outside here. Um, now, we've come to the end. If you avoid this episode and you have not subscribed to our podcast, our YouTube channel and Spotify, we request just do us that one favor and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching the CDC podcast. This has been season one, episode four. Season one, episode four. And I have been your host, Dr. Chepsi. And thank you so much, Dr. Gishana, for setting your time apart to come and share with us your story. Maybe another time we will have another episode to talk about other things. Otherwise, thank you so much, guys. We love you and thank you for the support. This is CDC Podcast. We will see you in episode five.